good evening world as i take a deep breath ah and welcome to another episode of band dog talk with the dog god and uh man Y'all know it's been a long day for the coach, uh, a.k.a. the dog guy. Been a long day. My wife um, works from home and uh, she goes into work, you know, into the office maybe once, at least once a week. Um, This week she'll be in there twice a week or twice this week, excuse me. So. For those of you who don't know, I got, you know, multiple litters on the ground as far as puppies. And my wife helps me out tremendously um, with the puppies. So today I had to do everything. The puppies, you know, picking up the shit, uh, spraying down the piss all you know all the stuff you do with puppies feeding the puppies then also i had to you know of course i take care of the big dogs doing the same thing clean out their kennels feed them so it was a man it was a rough day not only that not only that i had um i, I went outside today and uh i noticed that my fluffy uh i had a i have a fluffy frenchie by the way and I noticed that my fluff, Mr. Fluff, his name is Gigolo. He was, you know, he was gone. He wasn't in his in his kennel or in his little place that I have in my this little Frenchy condo that I got set up for him. And I'm like, oh man. And he's an escape artist, you know. We we MacGyvered his whole section, you know, just so that he can't escape because he always finds ways to escape, you know. And so, you know, he moved the rocks. And uh, it was, you know, it's, it's been raining off and on. And I live on like a mountain type, hill type. So our ground is pretty solid. You know, it's rock, clay. So it's hard for any animal to be able to dig. You know what I'm saying? Like you be digging up rock and stuff like that. So it's really hard to really dig into the ground. But anyway, he he figured out a way to dig underneath the fence. And then he was out. He got out. So man, I was, you know, I was like, man, this this damn dog done got loose. And it was, you know, it was at night too, so we didn't hear anything. And one thing about him, he don't go back where the dogs are. You know, he he's he's gone. You know what I mean? Like he's out there exploring the woods, and who knows where that boy went. So anyway. I'm not even stressed about it. You know what I mean? Like I paid a penny, pretty penny for him. Like right when them fluffies was first taken off, you know, I paid 15,000 for him for mine. And that's a lot of money. That's the most I've ever spent for a dog, to be honest with y'all. Um, before that, it was like 10,000, 12,000. So anyway, you know, I'm not even like, I'm not even as mad as what you would think somebody would be you know, losing a dog like that. I'm not even that mad because I just know that's how he operate. You know, he, he he's an escape artist. So I call my wife up and I'm like, man, I said, uh, his name is Gigolo. We call him Jigga. I said, oh, Gigolo done escaped and stuff. And, you know, now my wife, you know, she panicking and stuff. Oh, man, what's going on? Oh, my God. I'm like, well, you know, hey, it is what it is. If If he don't come back, I just got to take that L, you know. So long story short, I get back to my, you know, all the stuff I had to do today, which is a lot because my wife went into work, so I had to do everything. So that held me up because I was looking for him and I couldn't find him. And, um, you know, like I said, I had a full load of work to do. So I'm like, well, it is what it is, you know, boom. Then my wife calls me up probably like three hours later said that, you know, she, I guess, got on Facebook in the neighborhood and, you know, somebody posted them in the neighborhood, you know. And like I live in the 
in the woods in the country, you know. So, you know, even though I have neighbors, everybody's spread out on acreage. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, we're in the mountainous terrain. So it's not like a flat plain. You can actually just see, you know, in your neighbor's, you know, on your neighbor's property. You can't see nothing with, with how we're all operating and, and position, how our properties and stuff are positioned with all the trees and the hills and the mountains. So my wife called me up, told me that, hey, you know, we found him. And uh, he was he was at. He was like two neighbors down. And of course, I couldn't see him when I was out there driving around on my ATV trying to find him. But anyway, um, he was there, um, got him back. And uh, that's that, you know what I mean? So my day started off on the wrong foot, in a sense. Um, he messed up my time. I got up early because I knew I had to do everything because my wife was not going to be here. And then he threw it all off. So, you know, normally I'll be chastising my dogs when they do things wrong. And like I said, mentally, I was just so fatigued, just even thinking about where could he have gone. I just, you know, I just gave him a little just talking like, bro, well, come on, man. You know, and he know he was off. He know he was wrong. You know, your dogs know because he just, he's, he's escaped many a times and I've chastised him because he keep doing that type of stuff. So he knew he was wrong. I could see it in his eyes. So I was like, whatever, man. I put him up. MacGyver just kennel spot again so that he couldn't escape. You know, who knows with that dog? It's a very smart dog, by the way. So anyway, long day, y'all. It's been a long day. I took care of everything. I made it, you know, to prepare for this show with you guys. And, uh, man, we're going to get right to it. So, um. Like I always tell y'all, man, get comfortable. You know, it's going to be a good show. Um, you know, if you you like to partake in the herbal sensations, <laughs> go ahead and roll you up something, man. Get comfortable. If you, you know, you like the cocktail or something like that, go ahead and get you a little drink. Sit back, you know, have an ear to hear, you know, pay attention. You know, I'm just going to drop some of this. This lab, what I call my lab talk, I'm going to let y'all into the lab. Last week, we discussed the AR-15 band dog. You know, that's my other version of band dogs. I'm going to have, I, mean, I have a few different versions. And this is one of the versions that we're going to talk about today, which is the AK-74 band dog. Um, so like I said, get comfortable. Um, you know, we'll dive into my thought process and, you know, the what's, the why's, the how's, you know, just the vision, you know, I'm just, like I said, I'm, I'm letting you guys in because I always say, even though I might give you guys my recipe, right? Because I don't mind, you know, I, like I said, I'm transparent as a dog, as a dog, man. I don't have to lie to kick it. Um, however, even though I give you the ingredients, that doesn't mean that you know how to pick out the exact okay ingredient or dog or characteristic that i do you see what i'm saying like i can tell you exactly which dogs that i used and why and you can go and copy that however how i pick out dogs i guarantee you it's not how you pick out dogs you know how i pick out puppies I guarantee you it's not how you pick out puppies. You know, a lot of pick, people pick out puppies for different reasons. You know what I'm saying? And I have I have enough experience with puppies and dogs to, to know how to pick out the right dogs for my recipes. You know, because every dog is a part to me. Like I tell y'all, it's a part, like a part to a car, a vehicle. Every dog is a part, not parts. You know, a lot of people when they get dogs, they're trying to get all in one. And then I don't, I don't, you know, I don't pick dogs all in one. I pick out dogs for a part. Like I see a part or a genetic characteristic, not sticks. And I pick out that dog for that characteristic. You know what I'm saying? And that's how I put my formulas together, just like that. You know what I'm saying? So we're gonna break down how 
um, and why and all the stuff, you know, I decided to put together this AK-74 band dog. So I'm going to go ahead and take me a sip of my um, vodka lemonade. You know, I don't partake in the herbal sensation anymore. I done retired. You know what I mean? Nothing against you guys who are connoisseurs of the herb. I used to be one of those connoisseurs, very high level connoisseur. Now I'm retired from that. So now I just have a little cocktail, you know what I mean? Just to go ahead and, you know what I mean? Just wind down from the work day. You know what I'm saying? So go ahead and partake in that. I'm going to go ahead and take me a sip. And then we about to dive deep into this, into this, you know, into these lab files. You know what I mean? The file of the AK-74 band dog. Ah, yeah, that was that was good. That was ah, like I said, I needed that. I needed that 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 little cocktail there, man. So let's get into it. All right. So if you guys follow me, some of you guys do, some of you guys don't. If you don't, um, um, most on IG. Um, so. You know, that's something that you're going to get real time. You can contact me on there, DM me, all that stuff. I'm mainly on IG. So for those of you who follow me on IG, you guys know that I have a dog, <clears throat> Double XL Pitbull Freak of Nature, okay? AK-47 Chopper, AKA the Bone Crusher. Now, you have certain Pitbull enthusiasts or some of these game dog pit bull lovers that like to um, spectate on things that I do because I, I trend set. I do my own thing. I don't follow nobody. I do my own thing. And that's what we all should do as dog men. But at the same time, I've learned from others who came before me, right? So anyway... I have a dog that I purchased. I didn't create him. I wish I did, though. But being that I didn't, I wanted something like the dog I'm speaking about, which is AK-47. And I found a breeder who did what I wish I did. But he did it first. So I'm thankful. And I salute him for him. Matter of fact, not only do I salute him for creating the dog that I'm talking about, I paid him for it. You know what I'm saying? I paid him $12,000. That's including shipping, by the way. For this particular dog that I'm speaking on, which is AK-47 Chopper, AKA the Bone Crusher. Okay? Now, the AKA came after the AK-47 name. I named him AK-47. Then the Bone Crusher came after the fact as he developed into the you know, young man that he is today. And now, you know, of course, you know, you know how we get nicknames from our parents as we get older, right? And they start to, you know, see things in you and then they nickname you, right? Or your homeboys give you a nickname. That's pretty much what I did for AK-47. That's the AKA, you know what I'm saying? The bone crusher, right? So I get this dog. His name is AK-47, right? And I'm going I'm to put a picture up for you, for you guys shortly, but I just want to kind of give you a brief, um, you know, just kind of summary on AK. So I purchased this dog from a kennel in the UK called Lion's Lair Kennels, okay, in the, in the UK. Now, if you know anything about the, the UK, they ban a lot of these performance dogs in the UK. You know, that's how they do. That's how they operate, which pit bulls are banned in the UK. So how a lot of these pit bull lovers are still getting past that law is they're getting their pit bulls and having them papered as American bullies. That's what they're doing, right? So I see this dog. Okay, this is before I purchased AK. 
I see this dog. It's a red dog. Some of you guys might know the dog. Okay, the dog is named Gunner. Okay, his name's Gunner. It was produced by Crack Kennels. You know, a shout out to Greg who produced him. So there's this dog named Gunner. Now, Lion's Lair out there in the UK, he's he's into performance dogs heavy. Not only is he into them, he has his dogs looking like well-conditioned Olympic athletes, like track athletes. Like he has there's his dog, all his dogs is looking top tier like that. That's how he has his dogs. Some might say he uses steroids. I don't know. I can't say what he used. All I know is every one of his dogs is looking like a top tier conditioned athlete. So I see this dog. His name is Gunner. It's a red dog. It's got the long snout. It's got the cheeks. You know, we talking about pit bull. He got the cheeks. He shredded wheat all the way through. Shredded. Got the tuck. You know, I love them. I love that tuck. He's got the tuck. He's got the thick rears. I love strong, thick rears. He's got bone. I like thick bone. Not massive bone, but I like, you know, a thicker bone, medium built bone. I like that. He's got a spread, a chest spread. I like a chest spread on a dog. He's got shoulders. I like shoulders on a dog. He's got traps. Okay, beautiful red color, red nose. Okay, so it reminded me of like one of them old family red nose dogs, right? Them old family reds, because I'm I'm a pit bull. You know, I started with pit bulls, y'all. So I, I've had red nose pit bulls before. I know what an old family red look like. Reminded me of a, like reminded me of an old family red, but just bigger, right? So I see this dog, and then instantly because I love performance dogs, I'm I'm a performance dog man. Y'all know I do that. I'm a performance dog dog man. When I seen this dog, it instantly told me performance, and it showed me old school red nose pit bulls the pit bulls that i was in love with when i was younger and back in 98 97 okay but it was bigger okay it was bigger but it looked like a pit bull so at that time i was looking for a bigger pit bull that i can add to my standard pit bulls because i wanted to make me a larger catch dog i wanted to make me my own larger catch dog that's what i wanted Okay. I didn't want to follow other people's formula and do regular pit bulls. I wanted a larger catch dog. I understand my drift. So when I saw this dog, I was like, oh, who's this? You know, I, I did my research on the breeder. You know, I tapped into him like, hey, man, I'm, I'm a fan. I love everything that you do because, you know, I'm, I'm checking out all his dogs. I'm like, oh, every not just this dog is looking like that, but every one of your dogs is looking like that. So obviously you have a theme going. And I'm into performance dogs. I love a dog that is performance built, performance conditioned, you know, like I was a fan. So I reached out to him. I said, hey, man, I'm looking to add a dog with size with that pit bull phenotype that your boy Gunner got. I said, let me know when you have breedings on Gunner. And, you know, now I know at the end of the day, he's busy. So, but I'm, I'm letting him know, like, I'm serious about it. You know what I mean? Like, Hey, I'm doing dogs. I'm on a DN, a dog DNA shopping spree. Y'all heard me say this before. And I said, I want, I said, I want a dog off of him. Period. I need that. So fast forward. There's another dog. Dog named Spade that he owns is a female, is a black female. Um, produced by Unleashed Kennels. If you guys know who Unleashed Kennels is, y'all can go research them, look them up. They got some nice uh XL dogs. They were real heavy into the black dogs because the black dogs are very popular, more XL type pit bull phenotype genotype so he had this female and he did a breeding with gunner and spade okay and i'm gonna show you guys some pictures in a minute but i just want to tell you this story before i get into it so i seen the breeding i was like yep that's what i need spade black dog 
Okay, I don't care about colors, by the way. Just letting y'all know. I'm, I'm structured frames and brains and motors. That's 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 the dog god. Frames, brains, and motors. I don't care what color. It could be purple or green, pink. I don't care. It's got, if it's got the frame, it's got the temperament that I want, and the motor to drive, I'm, I'm with it, right? So anyway, female is a black dog. Tall. Okay, remember I told you I wanted the largest style catch dog. She's tall. However, she's ripped up just like the, you know, just like Gunner. Ripped up the tuck. Nice bone. You know, I'm like, oh, we that's a bad bitch. You know, I'm like, that's a bad bitch. So right there, when I saw that pairing that he did, I instantly hit him up. He, he, he didn't have to hit me up. Remember, I told you, I told him to tell me, hit you know, hit me up when he does the breeding. But I guess I'm sure he get everybody wolfing in his DMs. You know what I'm saying? So he might have thought I was wolfing too. You know what I'm saying? Because I get a lot of people wolfing in my DMs every day. So anyway, I hit him up instantly. Bam. Hey, brother, remember me? You know, he's like, yeah, yep, yep, yep. I say, hey, I need first pick female. At that point, I was looking for a female. I already got studs on my on my yard I was going to use, right? He's like, all the females. He's at like, first pick females. Matter of fact, I think he said all the females was was already spoken for the, all the picks because he didn't have the puppies yet. He said all the picks were spoken for. I'm like, damn. Because as soon as he posted, I hit him up. So I was like, damn, I, damn, you just posted this because I follow you every day. He's like, yeah, they all, you know, all the picks are, are, are already spoken for. He said, right now I got second pick male. He said second pick male, third pick male, and then fifth pick male or something like that, right, that he had available, right? So I was like, well, if I can't get a female, I need to get the DNA. I want the DNA. I said, I'll take second pick male since that's all I got, I, you know, because I would have took first. If he told me first pick male, I would have took first pick. Because, like I said, I want to pick what I want, you know what I mean? So, anyway, second pick male was available. I put my deposit down. What's the deposit? He told me what the deposit was. Put my deposit down. I, like I said, now this is before the dogs. This is when he just announces the breeding. Okay, that's how you got to do it. When you really into to your dog genetics and you really serious about your dog program, you know what I mean? You, you know, you can't be procrastinating. Okay. When you know what you need, as far as your dog genetic parts, don't procrastinate. Make sure you are ready for what you are talking about, what you need, how your money together. Okay. So then when that breeder that you know, that got the dogs that you want announces a breeding, you can put your deposit down so that he can reserve your pick. Okay, and that's what I did. Boom, boom, put my deposit down, y'all. Fast forward. Puppies come. Males available. I'm second pick. It's my time to pick. We're talking about AK now. And there was a black dog, a like two buckskins, a red, and a chocolate male available, right? Somebody picked one of the black males first pick. So it was my pick. I was, you know, second pick. I had I had four dogs to choose from. The breeder, right? His name is Simon. Shout out to Simon, by the way. His name is Simon. Lions there. Looked him up. Lions Lair on IG. Look him up. Um Simon, right? He 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 says, hey. Can I make a suggestion for you? I'm like, yeah, go ahead, man. You know what I mean? Because I already knew what I was looking for, but, you know, I, I have respect for people that I deal with, right? So, yeah, man, what, what do you suggest? He said, I, I suggest this black one right here because black is real popular, the black dog, you know, is, you know, he's big, blah, 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 right? So I said, hey, no disrespect to you, Simon, but I don't pick dogs for color, first and foremost. I told him that off the top. I don't care about I, that dog could be like I was telling you a pink, yellow, green. I don't care about no color on frames, brains and motors. Told him that off the top. I said, I need you to stack them dogs for me because I need the frame I'm looking for. I'm trying to create a bigger catch dog with those two. That sire and that dame that you use to create him, the genetics. I'm looking at those genetics and I'll need the dog to bring the genetics that I need to my program. OK. I need you to stack those dogs. I need you to stack the biggest dogs that you have. So that black one and then AK was the other one, right? Which happens to be a buckskin, right? AK is a buckskin dog. 
So he stacks them for me because I'm looking for a frame. So that black male was a big male. He was big, bulky. He was bulky, bulky type male. Okay. Which I didn't, I, I was looking for a pit bull phenotype. That to me was kind of bullyish, even though it's not bully, but it was kind of bullyish how, how the frame was built, that black one. AK, he had the long snipey, he not, almost looked like a hound dog, had the long snipey, you know, that, oh man, that old school gang pit bull look. You know what I mean? Like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm from that era. I'm from them type of dogs. So I already knew what I was looking for. He had that snipey long snout. He had the long hound dog type ears. He had bone that I like. But what really impressed me the most that made me choose him was his leg. He had the leg. He was taller. And then he had the spread. You know, he had that little, that, that, that little bit of bow. You know, almost that bulldog bow in the front. You know what I'm saying? You know, what he wasn't straight leg. He had a little bit of bulldog type of bow in the front, but he had longer legs than that other one, right? He wasn't, he was leaner. He was leaner than that other one, though. Leaner, he was leaner than the black one. He was taller. He had a longer leg, and he had that bow in the front that almost, you know, that little profile, that kind of extreme flare in the front to the shoulders, right? I'm like, oh, that's him. I need him right there off the top. I said, I want him. And Simon was like, are you sure? You know what I mean? Like he was like su surprised that I chose the Bucks. You know what I'm saying? And I and I understand why, because people are so they they in tune with color. They don't they don't pick dogs like like the dog god. You know what I'm saying? A dog is a part to me. It's not a color. I can care less about a color. So I was like, no, nah, no, bro. I'm serious. I I want him. You know what I mean? And I appreciate your, you know, you know you giving me a you know an uh, 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 an option that you would suggest a, a suggestion but i already know what i want for my program you know what i'm saying like when i saw your two dogs i already knew what i wanted before your dogs had the puppies so anyway like i said me and him had a good rapport because he knew i wasn't playing he knew i was serious obviously because i came with my bread i hit him up he didn't he didn't have to hit me i hit him up put my deposit down instantly Told him exactly what I wanted. I got AK. So to get a dog imported overseas, right? And this is what I wish my overseas clients would get, okay? When they talk to me about dogs, okay? Because I kind of, every time I get an overseas person inquiring about a dog, I kind of dread it because they don't have no common sense about shipping. Like, you know, shipping ain't going to be cheap. Okay, it might be even more than a dog because at the same time, I'm going to bless you. However, the dog that I purchased, with, which is AK, was a lot of money. So the ship, so the dog was more than the shipping. But anyway, I picked the dog out. It's AK. Four months later, okay, because, you know, they have to be a certain age before they import them over to the U.S., to the United States, you know, rabies shot, et cetera. Four months later, I get the dog, right? So I get AK, and he looks like a hound dog. He's long, lanky, floppy ears, long, long nose. He looks like a hound dog, okay? So I get him, but I'm excited because I already know what I want. I know what I want. I already, I already got genetics waiting on him. See, we talk, we break it down, but I, I got to give y'all this, the, the foundation of what I'm talking about, okay? Which is AK, hence the AK-74. So I get this dog, fly, you know, he comes from overseas, okay? I spend the money on the shipping because I want my DNA. You got to pay to play when you want the top stuff, okay? You got to pay to play can't be cheap in this dog game when you want top tier genetics so i knew i was going to spend some money to get him shipped over here so i got him shipped over here i got my dog boom dropped off i get this i get this hound dog looking dog this is it's like a hound dog looking like a hound like oh man look at this dog man he real shy i get it you know what i mean he could come from a long trip from the uk i'm sure he wasn't getting a lot of attention over there you know, he comes shy with me, you know what I mean? He's real shy, kind of timid, 
I'm like, oh, okay, this dog kind of timid, but I know how to deal with dogs. And we talked about how to deal with these dogs when you get a dog that's not confident. You know what I'm saying? I know, I know how to force my energy on my, on my puppies and my dogs, right? So I get them. And, you know, I just start, you know, because I'm excited because I spent, this is actually the most money I spent on a dog. So before AK, I spent 10000 on three dogs. I spent 10000 plus shipping on, on the goat. Uh, the profit and oh, actually four dogs, excuse me, the goat, the profit, uh, rain supreme, and then uh, uh, blue. So, four dogs I spent 10,000 on, okay, 10, 20, 30, 40,000 on just four dogs before AK, AK 12. So, now I get this dog. I'm like, okay. All right, what's your, you know, what you, you know, come on now. I mean, I, I paid a penny, penny for you. Please, please turn out how I want it you to turn out at the end of the day. So I take my time with him, you know, I bond with him, and I have another dog actually around the same age, which is AR 15. We talked about AR 15 on the last episode. Okay, we're on the AR 15 band dog. I had them raised together. Fast forward. AK grows up, he grows more confident, he grows into himself, he starts to develop into this dog, right? Now, let's go ahead and pull up AK-47 real quick, okay? Hold on now. Let me pull him up real quick. Let me pull my boy up real quick here, man. Okay, so I'm about to pull them up right now, okay? Now, that's AK-47 at about two years old. That's him at two years old. He's older now. He's like three now. Okay? So I get this dog, and he's grown up to look like this right here. Y'all see what I'm talking about? Okay? Double XL, pit bull, phenotype genotype freak of nature okay does everything that my standard pit bulls do the ones that i currently have on my yard the ones that i've had in the past okay because i've started with pit bulls back in 96 97 98 okay acts just like them y'all However, you know what's different about him? He's just bigger, stronger, and faster. Literally. Literally bigger, stronger, and faster. So now I'm like, oh, man, I done scored. You know what I'm saying? Like, understand what I'm talking about. When I told y'all, I told y'all at the beginning what I was looking for. Okay? I need a bigger type pit bull phenotype genotype so I can make me make my own. I want to make a larger than standard catch dog that's what i wanted to make i needed something like ak and then i get them so remember when i stacked those two dogs up and he was looking lanky he had that spread in the front he had the longer legs he was long body look at what i got okay if he was 35 pounds and smaller and looked like this you would just think he's just a regular performance pit bull that's what you would think but he's not, okay? He's 26 inches tall. 26 inches, man. Okay? 112 pounds lean. As you see, right? You see that? See that? See how he built? Okay? But he's fast like my standard pit bulls. He's intense. He's got... Heavy mouth, heavy mouth. And what I mean by heavy mouth, that means he got to have something in his mouth. It doesn't matter what it is. He's he's just, he's just, he's got a, a mouth fetish. He's got to have something in his mouth, something in his mouth. That's AKA the bone crusher, bone crushing jaws, no cap. Okay. So I'm seeing this in this dog. I'm seeing this dog develop. I'm like, oh man, this is great. Now, 
as this dog is developing, I'm posting them on my, my social medias. And, you know, you're going to get the, the yays and the nays. You're going to get the applause and the hate. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm campaigning this dog because I'm excited about AK. I'm like, yo, like, I've had pit bulls before. I've had pit bulls. I have pit bulls. However, I've never had one like AK. Okay. Now, the plus to the minus to have a dog this big and freaky is the fact that his prey drive, because I don't fight dogs, his prey drive, eh, like he can care less about other dogs. Okay. Now, Will he defend himself? Oh, for sure. For sure. For sure. For sure. Will defend himself. However, a dog like this with this type of power and this intense drive, like he has drive beyond belief. If he if 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 he's motivated or when he's motivated to get something, you ain't gonna stop him. So if he had that game type pit bull drive, I wouldn't be able to control this dog. I probably had to shoot him to get him off the dog because he's so big and strong and fast and intense bite so hard i probably had to you know choke him out probably couldn't even choke him out because he's just that type of dog he's strong so that worked in my favor that he can tolerate other dogs he don't play with other dogs but he can tolerate them he ain't trying to go and kill everything on the yard like my dog for example shaka i got a dog named shaka okay which is, which is my standard pit bull he want to kill everything on the yard that's him okay he want to attack kill he don't care he just want to kill he got his prey drive is to the maximum ak his is like uh you know if he feel like he messing with you if not he ain't messing with you you know what i mean so anyway i get this dog he grows up to be this what i'm showing y'all right i have a lot of ak-47 chopper fans and a few ak-47 chopper haters that want to be like, there ain't no such thing as this, and there ain't no such thing as I, I get it. I get it. You know, there ain't no standard for a larger pit bull. There is only a standard for a standard pit bull. I get it. However, that doesn't mean that there's no such thing as a bigger pit bull than a standard. There were bigger pit bulls in the past. There were bigger game dogs, like Mayday, for example, in the past. Okay. So me having a what I will call a double XL pit bull freaking nature is, you know, is not something that's uncommon. You know what I mean? I'm just promoting mine, you know, cause I'm proud of it. So one of, you know, one of my followers hit me in the DMs, man. One day it was like, coach dog got, have you ever thought about making a band dog out of AK? Now, He's he's a follower. He knows that I have band dogs. However, I never thought about what he he mentioned to me. And I told him I was like, you know what? I I never thought about that, but you know what? That would be a good idea. You know, like he gave me an idea. Real talk. Hey, salute uh live your uh live your life dogs, man. Salute, man. What's up with you, man? Welcome. Welcome to the chat. So, he gave me an idea that I, I didn't even think about. Like, why would I not think about that, right? And the reason why I wasn't thinking about it because I bought AK specifically to breed him to my standard pit bulls so I can take my family of pit bulls that I've produced and add AK genetics to those and make a larger style, right? That Because that was why I bought them. So I'm like, hmm. I'm like, hmm. A dog like this with man drive? Hmm, that would be something else. I think it might be too much, but you know what? That that might be that might be something else, right? So anyway, I started contemplating that. I started really thinking about it. What he what he was talking about, right? Okay, yeah, you know what? I might do that, right? Yeah, matter of fact, I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna show you the next dog I decided to take him to. Okay, so follow me. And like I said, I'm trying to give y'all the background. So you know, follow me. Let's see here. Okay, so check this out. So 
like we talked about on the previous episode with the AR-15 band dog. Okay, I created my own band dogs. Okay, using Buff Dogs Foundation band dog recipe because I bought the genetics. I bought the straws, the semen off of that dog right there. You see Buff Dogs. That dog's name is Red Bull. You see below, that's his daughter, Silver Bullet. You see the resemblance, right? Now, Silver Bullet, okay, her genetic recipe is Buff Dogs Red Bull times my girl, Holy Spirit. Okay, let me pull that up and let me show you that real quick before we dig deep into uh, to Silver Bullet. All right, so let me do this real quick. Said so we in the lab, y'all. You know what I'm saying? We in the lab, so I'm, I'm I'm trying to sketch it on the board for you guys, so you guys can see my vision and why I chose the dogs that I chose. All right, hold on. Let me see if I can find what I'm looking for. Hopefully, I got it here. Okay, yep, I did find it. Okay, so how did I produce Silver Bullet? I took Holy Spirit, which is my performance game pit bull that I produce. Okay, look at that bitch. Look at that. Look at the build of that bitch. That's my genetic recipe that produced that bitch right there. That's my shit, right? Okay. And then I took Red Bull, which is that dog that you've seen uh, with Silver Bullet, right? Look at that dog, right? Buff dogs, I got that straw, got that semen, the, gen the genetics, their foundation. They they built the whole band dog program is built off of Red Bull, by the way. But anyway, I got I used him and I bred him to Holy Spirit, my dog, my bitch, right? My game pit bull bitch. You see that bitch right there? Okay, you see how built that bitch is? Genetics right there. Real, real athlete. Real, real, real game bitch. Okay. Real drive. Okay, frames, brains, and motors. That's my specialty. So I said, you know what? I'm going to take Red Bull, okay, their band dog genetic recipe, and I'm going to slot it into my pit bull, my pit bull bitch. And then boom, I produce Holy Spirit. I mean, excuse me, I produce um, Silver Bullet. So let's go back to Silver Bullet, okay? So we in the lab, y'all, so follow me. Follow me, follow me, follow me. All right, so let's go back. So, Red Bull times Holy Spirit produced Silver Bullet. That girl down there, it says the daughter right there, that's Silver Bullet. So I said, all right, who am I going to take AK-47 Chopper to first? Okay, because I also have two of her sisters. Okay, one is named uh, Nina 9 Millimeter. Okay, the other one is named Prima Donna, and I also have AR-15, her brother, right? So I have four. Okay, there was five out of that litter. I kept four of them because those are my foundation band dogs. That's my foundation recipe was those four dogs. So like, okay, who am I going to take AK-47 Chopper 2 first? I said Prima Donna, uh, excuse me, uh, Silver Bullet. Now, Silver Bullet, okay, give you a little history on Silver Bullet. I used to have all the girls together in one, you know, in one pack. Now, Silver Bullet has an energy about her that is different from the other sisters. The other sisters had a coexisting type of energy where they could politically get along in their pack, right? Okay. Pack politics. I'm gonna leave it at that. Now, for some reason, Bullet couldn't program with that politic for some reason. And those two dogs didn't like the fact her sisters didn't like the fact that she couldn't program with the politics. So they damn near killed her one day. And I came just in the nick of time where they were just tearing her ass up, silver bullet. They were tearing her up. And by the grace of God, I was able to save her life. 
So from that point on, when I saved her life from that pack dynamic of getting jumped by her sisters, they was trying to kill her. They were about to kill her. I saved her life. I put her in her own space. Even after that major ass whooping that she received, she was still cocky as hell like she was. That's the reason why she got banged out in the pack. She was still acting cocky. Still fence checking, still jumping up and down, still rah, rah, rah. I'm like, man, this bitch is, you know, this bitch is a little, you know, eh? she got a little extra in her. Not only did she take an ass whooping, but, she, you know, she's still antagonizing the dogs from far away trying to get another ass whooping. So anyway, she ended up being by herself. And so I thought off the top, like, she's got to be the first one I'd take AK to because AK he has that drive, but, you know, he, he can care less about that type of confrontation, which is a good thing for me because I ain't got to worry about him trying to knock off my dogs on my yard. You know what I'm saying? He damn near the biggest, you know, pit bull. Matter of fact, he is the biggest pit bull on the yard. So I wouldn't want his, you know, prey drive to be at the maximum. You know what I mean? But she got that drive. She got it. And she's very cocky and confident, very confident type of dog. You know what I'm saying? Like willing to go back into the fight you know, if necessary. So I'm like, okay, this girl right here, you know what I'm saying? She confident, you know, she got great structure, muscle. You know what I mean? She could take a lick. You know what I mean? She could take pain. You know, you know she got a natural instincts to want to protect. I'm like, okay, she's the, she's definitely going to be the first one that I choose to go into this recipe. Okay. This, what I would call an AK-74 band dog from AK-47. So I go ahead and plan the breeding, okay? I announce it, tell everybody, hey, I'm going to do an AK-47 band dog. Everybody's excited about it, right? Everybody's excited about it. Oh, well, you're going to do AK with a, you know, with Silver Bullet? You know, could I tell them I'm doing Silver Bullet? You know, I get a lot of people, a lot of feedback, a lot of good feedback. So... I get a couple of guys that hit me in the DM like, yo, I want one. However, I only get one of those guys to drop a deposit. One. He's like, coach, I want one. Matter of fact, I'm going to put a deposit down now. I'm like, all right, man, good. That's smart. You know what I'm saying? Everybody else was talking, but they ain't putting deposits down. But you did. So I do the breeding. So now I'm excited. I don't know what I'm going to get, just like with the AR-15 band dog. I don't know what I'm, what I'm going to get, but I'm excited about it, y'all. I'm excited. So she has her puppies. I do the breeding. She has her puppies. I had one, two, three, four. I had four puppies. Okay. Four. Only four. And... One of them was stillborn. The other ones, the other three, you know, made it, right? They survived, right? But one of them was stillborn. So get her situated, whatever. Long story to the short, because we want to make this short. One of them only survived out of that. One puppy survived. It was a female, black female. And I'll show you what she looked like. So hold on real quick. Like I said, follow me in the lab, y'all. So follow me in the lab. Follow me in the lab. So this is what she turned out, right? The puppy. We only get one that, that made it, right? Out of four. Okay, boom. And it just so happened that the individual that Gave me the deposit, was looking for a female. And it was a female that survived and then was black. And he wanted a black one too. So he you know he 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 came up. Okay. Cause he put his deposit down and he wanted a female, and the color was a black one too. So he got everything in that he wanted. He was excited. He was happy. You know what I'm saying? Now everybody else was in my DMs like, man, coach, what's what's going? I mean, ah. Cause I announced there was four and then of course only one made it. So everybody was all sour and, you know, and they feelings and stuff. Cause you know, everybody liked to talk. 
But, you know, money talk, bullsh walk. Y'all heard that before, right? You know, just like I gave you an example of how I was able to, you know, get second pick right when the breeding was announced. I put my deposit down. That's what this young, you know, this this brother did. You know what I mean? Put his deposit down when I announced that I did the breeding. Now he got, you know, he got the only puppy that was out of there. Okay. By the way, that dog is, man, I'm going to have to get some pictures of that dog. That dog's a year old now. Monster. That bitch is a monster. When I tell you a monster, that bitch is big, muscular, and she do it all too. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to AK-47 and Silver Bullet. One female, that bitch is a beast. Okay, out there in San, Ant uh, not San Antonio. He's in, he's in Houston. Excuse me. That dog's out there in Houston, man. Shout out to Armando, man. That's his, that's that's my client's name. Armando came with his money. He got the female he wanted, and that female is Wowzers. Okay, shout out to AK and Silver Bullet. Okay, so boom, I did that breeding first. Got four puppies, only had one survive. That's the female right there, right? So from there, I'm like, okay, I got to do that again. I got to do that breeding again because I, I wasn't able to get anything off that because I wanted something too, right? But being that my client put his money down, right? Of course, I got to honor that. So he got the first AK-74 band dog, okay? That female right there. So now I'm like, all right, okay, Silver Bullet, she only had four puppies, and then, you know, she, she's so high-strung, too. Silver Bullet's so high-strung. I know how to do her now, but she's so high-strung, like, you got to have her separate from all the dogs because I'm sure she stressed her, her pregnancy out because she's just jumping and doing all kind of crazy stuff that she always does, whether she's pregnant or not. So, you know, I'm sure that's probably why her puppies didn't survive and she only had one that's, that lived, you know, because she's probably stressed her puppies out. Um, so anyway, I went back into the lab, y'all. Okay, because I wanted something off of that. So let's go ahead and show y'all what I decided to cook up. So instead of silver bullet this time, I decided to cook up okay, AK 47, right? With silver bullet's sister, okay, Nina Nine. Now, why did I choose Nina 9 millimeter? Okay, there's a couple of reasons why I chose Nina 9 this time. Now, Nina is more Mastiff type. And what I mean by Mastiff type, because she has the, the Neapolitan Mastiff. She has the German Boxer. She has the American Bulldog and Game Pit Bull, right? Because her... her Father is the Red Bull, which is Neapolitan Master, German Boxer, American Bulldog. And her mom is Holy Spirit, which is the game Pit Bull, right, that I showed y'all. Now, like I said, she takes more after the Mastiff type. Like if you look at her in the face, she got kind of like the Mastiff type of face. You know what I mean? She's got a little more skin. She ain't as tight in the face and in the neck. I mean, it's not, you know, it's not crazy. But you can see the master feature. Like she got heavy bone. Um, like I said, more masterfy. That's how, that's kind of what she took after. You know what I mean? However, the other attributes that really like drove me to her is 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 not only the athleticism because they're all athletic, but her overall size. Cause I wanted them to be, you know, I, I wanted to, to compliment AK. I wanted the size on them, you know, and, and they all have drive, you know what I'm saying? So none of them lack drive from Nina to silver bullet to prima Donna. They all from AR, they all got the drive. So all the drives are there, but the look, okay. The phenotype. Okay. Nina had that master V type. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to run that in there. I'm going to, I want to get a little bit more size. And AK got some good size to him. So I'm going to run that Mastiff type, phenotype to AK. So I do the breeding. AK to, to Nina 9 millimeter. And I also want to say, you know, rest in peace to Nina, which is a fluke. This is a fluke. So anyway, when I do the breeding, I have the puppies and she gave me five, I think. One, two. Yeah, she gave me five puppies. Actually, she gave me six. I had six puppies and one. One didn't make it. So I ended up with five. But anyway, 
when she was done with her puppies, right? And I put her back down into the kennel. You know, she's back to her old ways. She's back with her sister, Prima Donna. And then, you know, they're back to their old ways, jumping up and down. And she did something to her foot. I don't know what happened to her foot, but something happened to her foot, to her foot where it was swollen up. I gave her the antibiotics. I set her aside, but her foot never never bounced back. And it just, you know, it, infe- it got infected and it, and it went all the way up to, to her whole leg, to where her whole leg was just jacked up. So, you know, it was either amputate the leg or put her down. So I had to put her to sleep, you know what I mean? Because I'm not going to have my dog hobbling on three legs, personally. Not not her. She's an athlete. So I had to put my dog to sleep early, and she was only three years old. So that, 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 that hurt me right there. However, I did get her puppies. I, get, I did get her genetics, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, do the breeding. Have six puppies. Get five puppies, right? Now, I'm going to show you the dogs so y'all can see what they look like. Okay, the breeding was a success. The dogs were a success. Like, the just what I envisioned, wow. Like, real talk. It was wow how the puppies turned out. And I'm going to show y'all what the puppies look like. Okay, so check out this. Okay, that's male number one. Now, this was my keeper right here. Okay, I named him AK-74. Look at the bone. Look at the chest. You can see the muscle, the head. Okay, he came out mastiff type. Okay, you can see the mastiff in him. Okay, shout out to Nina. She, you know what I mean? Her that mastiff type came out in him, even though that's AK's son. He's more mastiff. He got thick bone, thicker bone. I mean, AK got nice bone too. He's got thick bone, thicker bone than AK. He's big, heavy, like heavy set, heavy boned type dog. He's mastiffy. Like that, that'll be like the mastiff version of AK. Okay. Let me show you some more. Let me show y'all some more. The other ones. Let me show you all the other ones. Okay. Now he, this male right here, he looked like his dad. He looked like AK. I mean, that was almost damn near like a replica of AK, but just bigger. It was like a bigger version of uh, AK right here. He went to um, one of my clients out there in St. Louis. So he went to one of my clients in St. Louis. So you see his bill. He's more of an AK type, but bigger um, than the chopper. All right, let's go to the next one here, y'all. Like I said, we in the lab now. We in the lab, so I'm letting y'all see my lab schematics. Hopefully you follow me on this. Okay. Now this one right here, this male right here was more bulldog. He had a slight underbite, not too much. It was just a just kind of like slight. It was real slight. You know what I mean? Like you wouldn't even notice it unless you pulled his jowls up and you can tell it. But he had his his he was more bulldog phenotype. You know what I mean? Like his bill. His head, you know what I mean. Now, and 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 this guy was, shh, bro. He was mean too. He was mean. He was he was causing havoc in the pack. This boy was causing havoc in the pack. A real talk. He was over there. I mean, and they all get down, but he was over there causing havoc. You know what I mean? Just really wrecking the pack up. Okay, he went to uh, one of my clients out there in Virginia. Okay, this boy right here, but he was more bulldog phenotype. So the one that was my pick was more mastiff type. Uh, that second one I showed you was more AK type, it looked like an AK 47, but bigger. And then this boy is more bulldog type. So remember the recipe. Okay, 
Neapolitan Master, German Boxer, American Bulldog Game, Pitbull, and then AK-47. Okay. That's that's the AK-74 band dog recipe. So let me show you some more. Let me show y'all some more. So y'all can see how we operating here. Like I told y'all, we in the lab, man. It's extensive in the lab. It's extensive in the lab. It's a lot going on in the laboratory. Okay. So right here, check out this boy right here. Now, I sold this boy to my nephew. My nephew is a young dog, man. You know, he had his money right. He's excited about what Unc is doing. He wanted to be a part of it. You know, he wanted first pick mail off this. And he, you know, and he put his money up. You know what I'm saying? Like, I tell my nephew at the end of the day, like, hey, you want to play? You got to pay. Okay. So he understood it. You know what I mean? Like, he's like, yeah, man, Unc, I need that. So anyway, he gets this guy right here. Now, this boy ends you know ends up back with me because my nephew had a situation in his living situation where you know he had to get rid of his dogs because he had to move out of his living situation so then he reached out to me and said oh i need you to to take my dogs you know what i'm saying and of course i'm gonna take the dogs that i sold them right so i took him back so this male right here male number four actually turned out to be his daddy's clone like he turned out to be AK-47. Okay, real talk. He he's a splitting image of his daddy. Acts just like him, but a man stopper version of him, though. Okay, a man stopper, prey drive, maxed out, man drive. Okay, loves to bite just like his dad, athletic like his dad, intense like his dad, look like his dad, but got all the drives. Okay more intense drives than his dad does okay so this guy ends up turning out just like his daddy okay i named him chopper the man star but that's why i named him as i got him back okay so you can see the fusion of nina and ak right let's go back you can see the fusion right we're gonna go back to that of Nina and AK-47 Chopper in those dogs. Now, I know that I'm going to get heavy driven dogs just based off the fact that AK is highly driven. Prey drive is, uh, but remember, I didn't buy him for that. I got dogs that's already highly prey driven that I bought him for, right? Which was my own pit bulls. Highly prey, too, too much prey drive my pit bulls that I bought AK for. I was in the lab to produce a man stopper version of AK. I can care less too much on the prey drive, even though I know Nina is going to give me that. I know Nina is going to give because I've seen how they operate when it comes to other dogs. They don't play that. Okay. They want all the smoke. Okay. They jumped a sister. Nina and Prima Donna jumped the sister. Damn near killed her. Okay. There's another situation where I had a kennel accident and I had Prima and Nina out just roaming in. I have, I have an area where I have all my females at most. Majority, I have a couple of males in there, but I call it the bitches barracks. I have a common area where I'm cleaning out kennels and I let them out. And so I have a pit bull bitch named Africa who is very, you know, driven. And she likes to instigate and, you know, dogs, you know, they're energy driven animals. So when a dog is instigating and you're dealing with dogs who like instigation, like Nina, Prima Donna and whoever else that I got on my yard that's prey driven, then they're going to check that. You know what I mean? So anyway, I've had scenarios where I, their prey drive was tested and it's no joke. Nina and her sisters. Okay, prey drive is there, okay, to the max. So I knew when I cooked AK up with Nina, I was going to get the Mastiff genotype and I was going to get the drives that I needed. You know what I'm saying? That's why I cooked it up. 
And that's what I got. Those four, uh, excuse me, those five dogs. Actually, I didn't show you a female, by the way. Let me show you that before we we um we get deeper into this. Let me show you the female I got, because I got one female. And my nephew bought this female too. He bought the male and the female. Because he, you know, he started, he wanted to start his program. So he bought the male and the female. Now I'm gonna show you the female. Okay. So that's the female. And she, uh, how can I describe her? Um, I mean, and I end up, you know, being that my nephew had to get rid of his, I ended up getting her as well, man. That, that, the bitch right here, her name is Nia. I named her after her mother because her mother passed away. Um, but that bitch right there is beautiful. When I tell you beautiful, that's a beautiful bitch beautiful bitch and that bitch is built rears man to just man her rear end is just amazing and i'm into rears i like strong thick ang i like angulation i love a dog with strong rears because that drive is off them rears you know what i'm saying and her mom could jump high if y'all follow me on the gram, y'all probably maybe seen a couple of my little posts where I got them girls jumping. Well, they jumped themselves. They jumped pretty much out their kennel. Her, uh, Nina, excuse me, Nina Nine, her mother, and then uh, Prima Donna, they, they can jump out the gym. Like, literally, they can jump high, vertical. So, she ended up turning out to be an amazing dog. I mean, all of it. Everything that I envision in, in, in those dogs is there. All the drives, athletic, beautiful bills, nice structure, nice bone, tremendous bite, you know, superb athleticism, muscle on top of muscle. I mean, them dogs is on top of it. You know what I mean? So that's the female that I produce. Okay. Only one bitch. Okay, and I have her too because I, I sold her and that other male to my nephew and I got them both back. Um, so she's in my program and so is he. Okay. So now as I break down and I show you guys the formula, we talked about AK-47. You've seen AK-47. Okay, the drive on them is tremendous. Prey drive is, uh benefits me though because i don't need that type of dog really i don't need that dog being prey driven like that i don't need him like that i already got prey driven dog so anyway you've seen ak the phenotype the genotype the size okay bite drive is tremendous okay me and my band dog i need something with that type of bite drive that ak i need something with that type of athleticism i need something with that type of size for my band dog program right Okay, I've already produced my foundation band dogs that I'm going to use to create more band dogs, which is AR-15 and his sisters, Nina 9mm that you just seen right there, Silver Bullet that you just seen right there, and Prima Donna, I haven't showed her yet. But those four dogs are my foundation band dogs. Okay. Neapolitan Mastiff, German Boxer, American Bulldog, Game Pit Bull. Those four dogs I mentioned has all four of those breeds of dogs equally distributed in that order. Neapolitan to a German Boxer. Production of that to an American Bulldog. Production of that to a Game Pit Bull. See? So everything is equally distributed in those four dogs I mentioned, which is AR-15, Nina 9, Okay, Prima Donna and Silver Bullet. Now, the AK-74 comes from AK-47. AK-47 himself is a double XL pit bull freak of nature. Phenotype, genotype. I bought him to make pit bulls out of him, larger style pit bulls, with my own pit bulls that I produce, like Holy Spirit, Africa, Tiny, Shaka, jaws those are my pit bulls i produce i bought him for them or bought him for excuse me the females but then the offspring that i also will run into shock and jaws so anyway because of my followers salute to him 
throwing that idea out, I, I said, you know, I make, I'm going to make a man stopper out of AK. And I used Silver Bullet and Nina 9 to do it. Okay. I have 74, which is that first pick mail I showed y'all, mail number one. I have him. I have mail pick number four, which my, I sold to my nephew, which was mail, first pick mail that he bought. And then I also have the only female, which my nephew bought as well, that he had to, you know, give back to me because he, he couldn't keep him in, in his place anymore. He had to move. So I have three of those five AK-74 band dogs, okay, that I'm going to build on. Those are my building blocks for that style band dog. So... If you like AK, which most people do, and you want a man stopper version of AK, that's what the AK-74 band dog is, high performance band dog is. It's a man stopper version of AK-47 chopper, AKA the bone crusher, okay? It has all the drives included. Okay, with the on-off switch, though, which is very important when you have dogs that have that type of genetics. And I've talked about that before, how important the on-off switch is with these type of dogs that can be liabilities. Okay, when I cook up a dog like an AK-74 band dog, I have to make sure that it's not a liability. I want it to get along with your family. I want it to be okay with children. I wanted to think, I wanted to have a brain and awareness to say, you know what? I don't have to kill. I don't have to bite if I don't need to. I, I need those type of dogs with those genetics to have that type of computer in their, in, 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 in their, you know, that, that type of temperament, especially an AK-74 band dog that's coming off of the bone crusher. Okay that literally has a graveyard of bones that are all crushed up and broken up. He takes every bone, femur bone, any type of bone, and breaks them all the way down to the marrow. He does it, it's, it's, it's what he does, it's how strong his mouth is. He has to have something in his mouth. So I just give him bones. If you guys follow me on the gram, y'all seen him with the bones in his mouth jumping and doing that stuff. He's got to, it's like a pacifier. He's got a fetish. He's got to have bones in his mouth. And he crushes them. That's how strong his jaw power is. Then you add his strength and his athleticism to Nina's strength and that band dog. You know, the band dog's got damn near one of the highest bite pressures, you know, I guess it's based off of those different genetics that you cook into them. You know what I mean? So you take AK's genetics with Nina 9's genetics or Silver Bullet, which is pretty much the same, okay? They just take off a, of, you know, Silver Bullet, Prima Donna, Nina 9, AR-15. They're from the same gene pool, but they take different, spectrums of those genes right because it's it's not a tightly bred genetic pool right because you got so many variations of dogs with the different breeds and then they're not family line bred right it's scattered bred in a sense so the genes are spread out so each sibling is his own dog even though they come from the same gene pool if that makes sense so prima donna is not Nina nine. Nina nine is not prima donna. Prima donna is not silver bullet. Silver bullet is not AR fifteen. Even though they brothers and sisters, because the gene pool is so sporadic. So my AR fifteen. Excuse me. My AK seventy four band dog recipe turned out. It turned out to be something that. Definitely, I'm going to continue. Like I said, the dogs are a year old now. They turned a year in, uh, no, they turned a year in December. This Actually, they'll be a year this month, actually, because they were born in December. 
They are 15. Band dogs are a year old in August. August, September, October, November, December. Yep. That's correct. Yep, that's right. So they just turned a year um, this month. To, actually, toward the end of this month, actually, they'll be a year. So anyway, December, they'll be a year. The AK-74 band dolls. I have three of them. Okay. Um, what I'm seeing now in those dogs, I'm seeing the athleticism, especially in uh, – and Nina, the female, she's super athletic. She she probably can jump higher than her her aunties and her dad. Her dad jumps high. Her mom jumps high. Her, her aunties jump high. She she's nasty with the jumps, and got a monster rear. Um, one thing I do love about her is that she loves to play fetch. She loves to play fetch. And I like that because I can, you know, it's easy for me to condition my dogs that way. Cause I live on a hill. So I can take that ball that she loves, of, that she's just so into, and I can just throw it up that hill and she'll run up that hill and then she'll bring it back. Run up. I can do that probably a, real talk. I probably do it a thousand times. That dog will do it until she probably drops. Like that's how driven she is about that ball. So for me, you know, working her out, I, I like that. Cause I ain't gotta do too much, you know what I'm saying? I ain't gotta get on the ATV, you know what I'm saying? And 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 you know, drive behind them and run them up the hill. I can take that ball, and throw it up the hill. As long as my arm got power, throw that ball up the hill. She running after it, she coming right back, running after it, coming right back. So I love that about her. Another thing that I noticed about her, and even 74, but since we're talking about uh, Nina, is that I have her. You know, I have packs. You know, I've 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 been working on what I call my pack experiments with my prey driven dogs. Especially, you know, it's it's hard to get these pit bulls that's prey driven and these dogs that's got a lot of prey drive to pack up, right? But at the same time, they do it in the wild all the time, right? So I'm like, well, I want to do an experiment like that with my dogs. Plus, it it saves me space and also it's good for them to kind of you know, have that dynamic, that family dynamic, that pack dynamic, because dogs are pack animals, right? So anyway, I have Nina, right? I have her packed up with an XL Pitbull Draco. Okay, that's one of uh, AK's daughters as well, her her half-sister. Okay, so I got a Pitbull with a band dog. Nina's a band dog, and then she's packed up with, uh, her name is Yellow Flame, which happens to be AK's daughter to africa okay which is a xl pitbull draco right so i've seen the prey drive i've seen the the sibling scuffles we're gonna call them scuffles we're gonna call them, call them fights scuffles i've seen it i've seen how i had an ar-15 band dog in there that was older than them only by a few months that was very cocky because that's how them AR-15 band dogs is. They real cocky. Happened to my girl, cow, my girl, cow girl. Okay. I seen how they try to kill her. Like, <laughs> it's crazy how packs, you know, pack dynamics work. You know what I mean? And I seen her, Nina, scuffle with the, with the XL Pitbull Draco, bitch. And I seen the damage that she did to my XL Pitbull Draco. And now, like I said, it wasn't a fight because they have a dynamic. That's why I say when, when dogs have a dynamic, we call it scuffles. You know what I mean? I call it scuffles because it could be a disagreement. You know what I mean? That they get into it. However, the damage that I saw that this band dog, AK-74 band dog, did to my XL Pitbull Draco is on another level. And she wasn't even trying to hurt her like that. She was she was trying to, you know, they was in it. But it wasn't, you know, you know when a dog is like trying to kill something versus, you, you know, y'all just fight. You know what I mean? Y'all just fighting. Y'all ain't trying to kill each other, but y'all fighting. But the damage, okay, that was done was something else. Okay, was on another level. 
So I see the potential in the AK-74 band dogs. I see the drives in the AK-74 band dogs. Okay, all the drives. Man drive, you know, how they see strangers. If I bring somebody new to my yard, you know, how they're cool but apprehensive. You know, that's that defensive drive I like to see. You know, and I see how they get down with each other, the, the dynamic with each other. I see that as well. So when it comes to that AK-74 band dog, you're going to get athleticism. You're going to get size, right? You're going to get all the drives, prey drive, man drive, okay? You're going to get the on-off switch. You're going to get the hard mouth. You're going to get the, the pain tolerance. You're going to get the frame, extreme but correct frame. You're going to get the strong rears. You're going to get the double muscle. You're going to get the intensity. Okay, you're getting all that with the AK-74 band dog. You're pretty much getting AK-47. If you know who AK-47 is, I already broke him down. But if you know who he is, you're getting that dog, but a man stopper version of him. Okay. You're getting that dog, but a man stopper. Something that's going to subdue a man if necessary. And subdue prey if necessary. Okay. And do it at a high level. Not at a mediocre level. At a high level. What's up with you, Twan Mac? Blessings to you, man. Welcome. We're talking about this AK-74 band dog, you know, recipe, my recipe. You know, shout out to AK-47, man. It's all all, all based on the chopper himself, AK-47 chopper, my double XL pit bull freaking nature chopper, man. It's all based off of him. Um, but you, you know, you 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 getting what 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 my what my fellow follower mentioned to me before I cooked him up, right? Before I cooked that AK-74 up, band dog up, he's like, hey man. Have you ever thought of making a band dog out of AK-47? And so I did. Now, I have those offspring, and I'll be showcasing them, you know. Now that they're, you know, they're one years old, I'll be I'll be starting to showcase them more, letting y'all see them develop. Um, I'm going to run AK. Back to Silver Bullet again, being that I only got one puppy out of that, and that puppy I I sold uh, to my client out there in Houston. But I want to see that blend of AK with Silver Bullet. I want to I want a piece of that. You know, my client has that female, and that female is a, like I told you, she's a beast, man. Beautiful, beautiful bitch, black, jet black, and muscled out, big athletic all i mean you know all the stuff that i'm seeing in my dogs the ones that i was able to get off of ak and nina you know so i'm 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 going to run that play back again i'm running that breeding back again hopefully i'll i'll get a, a bigger litter i'll make sure i think of 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 the y'all and make sure she can have a full litter and all of them live you know so i'll make sure that but i'm doing that again because i want to keep some pieces off of that and then I'm gonna run them into the ones that I have now, and then boom, there it is. There's the there's the there's the lineage right there. The AK-74 band dog lineage for those who want the pieces and wants that phenotype genotype. Okay, that's my formula. I'll have AK into two litter mate sisters. Take those two litter mate sisters offspring and breed those together, and bam, there they go. So. For those of you who like AK and want a band dog version of AK, AK-74 band dog, that's how y'all going to get them. The AK-74 band dog. And you know what's so crazy about that recipe? I had so many people, I man, I, I stress it to y'all, so many people in my DMs woofing that they wanted them damn dogs. 
When the dogs came, I only had five. All those people didn't have their money right. Can you believe that? Those dogs were supposed to be sold before they even came out the womb. Because everybody was wanting them. They was all upset that there was only one puppy that was available off the first breeding with AK and Silver Bullet. They were all upset. Real talk. Oh, because what? Oh, how, how could this? What? I was ready. I was ready. You know, you get all that. You know, I don't know if y'all get it, but I get it. I get that all the time. But people in my DMs just woofing. Then I have them, right? Now, of course, I'm keeping one at least. I'm, I mean, I'm keeping one. I only have four available to the public. You know, my nephew hit me up. was like, I got to get two. So that left me with two. I had two. Two males available. Nice ones. It, what? Let's see. I sold those two males when they were like, what? Three. Wait. Three. One. One I sold at three months. Three and a half months. The other one I sold at four and a half months. It took that long to sell them. However, my DM was flooded with people woofing about them wanting to buy them dogs. Can you believe that? I'm sure y'all can if y'all is in my shoes. Y'all can believe that because that's what people do. They just talk. They talk. But then check this out. When I was showcasing the ones that I got, I had people in my DMs trying to buy those. Uh, Coach, I want to buy those. I want to, and they were serious about buying them. I was like, dog, why am I? Why would I sell you what I'm keeping? I do the breeding for me first. Those, are, those are my pieces. I cook them up for me first. I need those genetics first. Okay, so why would I sell my keepers to you? You had an opportunity to buy the ones I had available. Then you see the ones that I keep, and you're like, wow, ooh, ah, 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 ooh. And then you think I'm going to sell you mine? No. And if I did, I'm going to crack your head open with a price tag to see if you're serious about those genetics. And if you are, then you know what? I got to let it, you know, I'll, sure, I'll work a deal out with you where I'm going to get, a, you know, get some straws off them or something like that. Because, you know, you bought, you bought, you know, you bought my fucking foundation. So, yeah, I'll sell you if you pay my price. I'll sell you. I'll just give me some straws. But I know, I know, you know, I know these people ain't like that. They not, they don't understand genetics like me. So, oh, you want to buy them? I need twenty thousand. Uh, what? Yeah. No, you, you ain't got that. Then don't ask me, man. You had, a, you had an opportunity to buy the two I had available for two thousand, because that's what I was selling for two thousand a piece. You could have bought the two I had available for two thousand. But now y'all want to buy what I got? That I'm showcasing that you're seeing what you could have bought for two thousand. Now you want to buy my keepers? I need twenty thousand for those. Now, of course, that's over their head, right? Because they don't understand what that twenty thousand really means. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm gonna make way more than twenty thousand off of them, them keepers I got. You understand what I'm saying, y'all? I'm gonna make way more than twenty thousand. Off of the keepers, the two males and the female I got, I'm gonna make way, way more, way more than twenty. So twenty is the minimum that I need for those type of dogs. So that's the stuff that kind of baffles me about people, man. You know, I give them ample time to prepare for these type of dogs that they claim that they want. These particular special recipe cookups that they claim that they want. And then at the end of the day, when I have them available, they ain't got their money right. Then when I sell them out, then they want my keepers. I don't understand people nowadays. So when I announce, whoever's listening to this, and I'm sure people are going to listen to this, they might be intrigued by what I showed them with the recipe. They might be like, yo, I want one of those. When I announce that next breeding that I'm going to do, when I do the repeat to AK-47 Chopper, Double XL, Pitbull, Freak of Nature, AK, to Silver Bullet, 
and they claim that they want one. Oh, coach, I got to get one. Oh, dog, God, I got to get one. I need one. And you ain't got your deposit ready like my brother out there in Houston did. You know what I'm saying? Had his deposit right when I announced it. Boom. I want first pick female coach. Here's my deposit. If y'all ain't ready by then with your deposit money when I announce it, because I'm letting y'all know now I'm going to do it again. Y'all ain't, you know, oh man, I, I gotta, I gotta get, I, I need one of the bando. I need one of those. I need one of those like that. I need that AK sitting for a bando. Let me start saving now. If y'all ain't ready, y'all gonna miss out again. Y'all gonna miss out again. Cause I'm definitely keeping me something off of that. Cause I'm gonna keep my line going. You see what I'm saying? Everybody who's getting these prototypes that I'm cooking up for myself, you all have an opportunity to take these genetics that I created for me that I'm going to promote and market and blow up and take to the next level. You guys are able to have my genetic recipes, whoever gets them. And shout out to all the people who got all my prototypes. A lot of people got them. Shout out to all y'all. And not a, a lot of y'all, to be real with y'all, most people that buy my dogs, they're not really even breeders. The people who just will like performance dogs. So in reality, you know what I mean? They probably not even going to cook up with, with the genetics. I got a couple people who who got them that's going to breed them. But most people that buy my dogs are are people who just want companions, working companions, which is fine with me, which is fine with me. But for those who is, you know, building a programs, who have programs, who buy my genetics, you know what I mean, who can actually piggyback off of what I've worked hard on, what I've worked hard to promote, you guys are going to benefit a lot. You know, especially when, you know, everything takes off to to where I envision it to take off to. You're going to you're going to benefit. You know, it goes back to me, you know, reaching out to um buff dogs and asking for the foundation recipe. And, uh, you know, Joe was reluctant to let go of Red Bull straws, Roman straws. He didn't want to, actually, because that's foundation. That's where I'm at in my program. Foundation. I'm building it. Right. Once it takes off, I'm not giving it away. You see what I'm saying? I'm not selling it once it takes off. Ain't nobody getting it. I'm keeping it. I'm keeping it. But whoever has it. Whatever dog man has those foundation genetics that the dog guy started with, that they were able to cop for a good price for the low, okay? When I build it to where it's at the highest of the high level, when it's performing at the peak of its level, when it's at its peak popularity and I'm charging buku dollars because of supply and demand, whoever has those foundation genetics in their lab is going to benefit from it. They're going to benefit from it all my hard work. So when I announce these breedings to all those individuals who want it, because it sounds good in the lab that I discussed with y'all, I showed y'all it sounds good, looks good, and y'all really want it, make sure y'all money right. Saying I'm not beating your head in. Like I told you, I charged 2000 for those AK-74 bandaws. I sold them though. I sold them. Okay. But I guarantee you, as I keep producing these and they keep developing, they get better and better, they're not going to be 2000 When I build the popularity and people can benefit from my hard work, where people are, you know, the they're in demand. Oh man, what's what's that? Oh, that's that. Oh, that's that 74. That's the AK Center. Oh, what? That's that band. Oh, you got that? Oh, man, those is hard to get, man. Oh, man, how much you want for that? I mean, well, shit, if you go over there to coach over there at Formula One, you know what I'm saying? He's going to charge you five grand. You know what I mean? I'll charge you three because I got his, you know, I got, I got coach's recipe. I, I'll charge you three. You know what I'm saying? I ain't the coach. I ain't the dog guy. But, you know what I mean? I, I got his recipe. I'll charge you three. See? You won't even be able to do that. So. 
in closing, y'all, I just, you know, like I said, I wanted to, to break down the AK-74 band dog. We did that, okay, which is just pretty much AK-47 chopper, man stopper version. That's pretty much it. AK-47 chopper with a little bit more size to him, okay, with more prey drive and more man drive, okay, durable. That's pretty much it. That's what an AK-74 band dog is. Okay. So like I said, if y'all like AK, you want them to do personal protection, property protection. You want to go hunting with them. Okay. Whether it be hog hunting, I don't care, whatever hunting, you want to go hunting with that particular type of dog, AK-47 phenotype, genotype. You would tap into the AK you would want an AK4 uh, excuse me AK74 band dog high performance band dog that's what you would ask me for that like, man I want a guardian you know what I mean I like AK but I want a guard dog well then I'm, I'm gonna say hey you need you need is you need to you need the AK74 band dog you want a guard dog you want something to protect your family get the AK74 band dog okay you want a prey driven only type of dog go get his XL Pitbull Draco line If you want just something for prey drive, go get his XL Pitbull Draco. But if you want a man stopper, that's the AK-74 band dog, y'all. That's what that represents. That's the breakdown. That's the recipe. Okay. AK times a Neapolitan Mastiff, German Boxer, American Bulldog, Game Pitbull. That is the AK-74 high-performance band dog genetic recipe. And watch. For those of you guys who follow me, and I'll, I'll be showcasing them more, the offspring. Okay? Because like I said, all these prototypes, I, I'm keeping pieces of them. All that I, do, all that I cook up, I'm keeping pieces. So I'm going to be able to show you guys these prototypes as they develop and you'll get to see what i'm talking about with these particular dogs now i'm not going to be sicking them on human beings now just to show you the man drive okay i'm sure common sense can let you know that a dog like that will bite the you know out of somebody who's not welcome but i will show you their abilities okay I will show you the structure, the drives and stuff. I will show you guys that as they're developing. You know what I mean? Being that now that they're they're hitting that, that beautiful age of one years old. Still, still puppies. Y'all know that. They still puppies, but you know, they they getting more mature. And so I can do a little bit more with them. So I will be showcasing uh these offspring um soon. But anyway, like I said, I wanted to break that down. On today's episode, we broke down the AR-15 band dog on last week's uh, episode. We got the AK-74 band dog we broke down uh, on tonight's episode. And uh, yeah, I got a you know few more um, band dogs that I'm in prototype. I just brought back Red Tiger. I will be making a band dog version out of Red Tiger Jr. Um, he will have his own line of band dogs, um, being that he's his own phenotype. Different, different from AR-15, um, different from uh, the AK-74s. He's his own phenotype. So I will be um, basing a band dog off of him. Um, not a bulldog, but a band dog. Because I used um, Red Tiger, which, you know, rest in peace, Red Tiger. I used a straw off of him, and I took him to Silver Bullet and created Red Tiger Jr. So now Red Tiger is an official band dog thanks to silver bullet so you will be seeing a version of him in the future coming up i just cooked up another band dog um to prima donna uh roman buff dogs roman to prima donna um those offspring would be a version of a band dog as well um so yeah at least four versions of band dogs which all consist of similar genetic recipes because it all ties into my foundation. 
everything ties into the foundation I built, which is AR-15, Prima Donna, Nina 9mm, and Silver Bullet, Neapolitan Mastiff, German Boxer, American Bulldog, Game Pit Bull. That's my foundation band dog genetics. That's my foundation. And everything is tying into that foundation right there that I'm cooking. And there will be a variation into that foundation from here on out, okay? That will build my legacy for my high-performance band dogs. Right now, I have four versions of that foundation already in the works, already in the cookups. I already produced two versions of it. I got two more that I'm going to produce. I just mentioned Red Tiger's version. And then I got those Roman and Prima Donnas that I will be having a version of that cooked up so i'll have four versions of my own band dogs in the future okay so y'all pay attention y'all watch y'all see it develop okay so i appreciate you know you guys coming out you know i know it's late however you know shit it's the only time i got y'all you know i'm so busy like i said once i get done with this i got more work to do you know but i just want to make time to you know, share everything with you guys as far as, you know, just letting y'all into the lab, giving y'all this this in the field knowledge. Uh, you know, just as a dog man, you know, one dog man to the to the next. You know, just letting y'all into my thoughts, letting y'all into my lab. You know, just sharing some ideas and stuff like that with you guys, so that you know you can learn from it. And watch it develop. You know, you, you can learn and watch it. You can see me in the field actually doing this. You'll be like, yo, I remember when the dog guy was talking. I remember when he was saying this and saying that. I see it. I see it. I understand it. I get it. You know what I mean? He don't have to share all this information, but he does. You know, I can see what he was thinking in the lab when he thought of his AK-74 band dog. I can see what he was thinking in the lab when he thought of his AR-15 band dogs. I can see it. Matter of fact, I see it in the dogs. I see it in the productions. It makes sense. The vision makes sense. Okay. The lab work, it adds up. The genetics, it makes sense. That's why y'all hear me always say, God DNA we do, God DNA I do. You hear me say that stuff because it's about the genetics when you're in the lab, right? It's your seasonings when you're in the kitchen. It's your seasons. What kind of seasoning do you use on that fish or that chicken? How do you cook it? Same thing with your dogs. It's genetics. Okay? It's not necessarily rocket science. However, you do have to have a gift to understand what you see and how to put the right genetics together to create better. That is a gift. Not everybody knows how to do that. They might have the concept, but they don't necessarily know how to do that. Some people are gifted at that, more gifted than others. Okay. A lot of us learn from trial and error too. I've learned from trial and error. However, I have a gift when it comes to putting these, these type of dogs together. Performance dogs, I have a gift. I have an eye for what I see as a genetic part like i mentioned earlier in this conversation genetic not a genetics out of one dog genetic feature piece to my puzzle and then i just add those genetics up to create the dog that i'm envisioning over time keep adding genetic to genetic you know this dog's genetic i like that you know this dog genetic i like that Okay. Now, if I get more out of that, then, you know, I mean, that's even better for me. But if I'm just looking for that specific genetic that's strong in that dog and I focus on that, as long as I get that and if I get anything extra, that's extra credit. But if, as long as I get that, I'm happy. I still might be missing other pieces, but I got that. Right. I kept it simple for myself. Kiss method. I kept it simple for myself when I cooked it. Now, you know. We don't know how genetics splend. That's the magic of the most high. That's that's God's magic, if we want to call it magic. That's just how God works, right? We just assist God on putting genetics together. But the outcome is of God, right? 
because you know he he creates that nothingness into something. We just assist it by taking these these you know two dogs if we're talking dogs and we bring them together and we see what we see and we hope that we get what we see. Some people are good. At, some people are good at that. Some people are mediocre at that. Some people aren't really that good at that. I'm I'm good at that. And you guys will see over time, as you guys follow me, you guys will see my productions, and you'll be like, "Oh, I remember, I remember the dog God said that." And look what he got. So keep following me, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Like, keep tuning in. None of this stuff is entertainment. As I get ready to close out, there's nothing entertaining about being a dog man. You think picking up dog shit, cleaning up pisses is entertaining? You think taking care of dogs is entertaining? You think breaking up kennel accidents and kennel fights is entertaining? Refereeing kennels, kennel dogs is entertaining. Taking care of puppies is entertaining. Dealing with consumers is entertaining. There's nothing entertaining about being a dog man. It's just a whole lot of work, work, and more work. A whole lot of sacrifice of your time. You know? So as a dog man or an aspiring dog man, you tune in to someone like myself for the knowledge. That's why you tune in to me. You don't tune in to me to get entertained. I'm not here to entertain you. I'm here to give you field play. I'm here to give you some coaching advice from somebody who's a player coach when it comes to these dogs. That's what you learn from when you tune into my stuff. When you see my dogs, you see a level of, 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 of expertise when it comes to performance. You see it in my dogs. The conditioning, that the, the work that I put in conditioning, the genetics that I, you know, you see it. That's something that you can learn from when you watch and you pay attention to the things that I say and the things that I do, things that I show. You can learn from that. Okay, that's why I do this. That's why I do this podcast. So I can give back. And I mean, I can come back to you guys with some field play. You know what I mean? I can give you some in the field review of what I'm doing in real life and real in, in today's dog man reality. I'm giving y'all live, uncut, raw information. And if you pay attention, you can learn from it straight up. If you pay attention, you watch, you see, you listen, you're like, oh, man, damn, I can do that, too. And you can do it, too. You can do it, too. That's how I've learned. I watch. I watch everybody's stuff. I'm in the audience. I don't say nothing. I just be watching. I always, I'm a sponge. I got the ear to hear. I'm just here to sponge up, whether it's not something that I agree with or something that I agree. I'm just there to get sponging because I'm a... I'm going to pick up what I need to pick up and learn. And that's what you guys should be doing when y'all listening to me. You know what I mean? Listening. You know, if you got any questions, ask it. Don't, you know, feel free to ask the questions if you got it. But be here to sponge it up, man. You know what I mean? You know, watch watch me develop this. You know, watch me take it to another level. And then those of you guys who've been there from the beginning, you guys get to see it and y'all appreciate it. You'll be like, man, I was there from the beginning, coach. I was there from the beginning, to go, you know, dog God. I was there. I seen it. You know what I'm saying? I commend you. You know what I'm saying? You took you took a you took a lane that nobody was in. And you made it to what it is today, whatever that might be. You know what I'm saying? So I hope, hope I inspire you guys, you know, to just, you know, shit. If you see it, you believe it. You want to do it, pursue it. You got an idea, you want to create your own dog, do it. That's how every breed was made. Somebody had a vision on the on the breed before it was a breed. They made the dog before they made it an official breed. Somebody had that vision first. You know, hopefully I inspire y'all to think outside the box and do you. You know what I mean? Cook up your own dogs. You know what I mean? You ain't got to follow nobody else's trend. You can if you want to, but you don't have to. That's all I'm saying. You can be a trendsetter and make your own wave. And then all of a sudden now people following you. You know, people people like what you're doing. Now they want to do what you're doing. 
Why not? And that's what I'm pursuing. I'm doing me, you guys. So hopefully you guys can respect that. But, uh, you know, again, salute to Live Your Life Dogs. Thank you for showing up. Tuan Mac, thank you for showing up. You know, for those of you who's going to listen to this later on down the road, you know, when you guys have time, thank you for listening. Um, like and subscribe, like they always say on these. I always forget to say that stuff, but, you know, whatever. You know, y'all like. y'all. Say, hey, Jerry, man, salute, brother. Thank you for showing up. Um, you know, like, like and subscribe share you know I, I'm, I'm gonna consistently be here on thursdays for y'all you know just letting you guys in giving you guys this band dog talk like i said something new not many people are doing this probably not any maybe maybe a couple i don't know how many people's doing this but i'm doing it but i'm giving it to you from my perspective you know what i'm saying i'm letting you guys into to to my program and how i operate and how i do things man and and I appreciate y'all support. Real talk. I really do. But if you guys aren't following me on Instagram, follow me on Instagram. That's the best place where you guys can see me live in action when it comes to these dogs. Um, I'm going to try my best. Um, yes, sir. Hey, salute. Hey, thank you, Jerry. Appreciate you, man. Um, I'm going to try my best to uh, post something on 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 youtube you know what i'm saying just so that y'all can kind of get a glimpse of the stuff that i'm doing as well so i'm 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 getting more uh i guess comfortable with just doing youtube you know what i mean like like i said when it comes to these dogs it's not about me man i'm not it's not about me y'all I, I can care less i'm not here for the fame or the pats on the back you know i'm here for the dog so i'm trying my best to do content to where I can still educate y'all and still show you guys what I'm doing at the same time. So I'm working on that. I got some content content. Um, I just have to, I just have to release it, man. I just have to, I just have to put it out. So I will be doing that. You guys, you feel me? So you, you will, you will be getting more content from me on YouTube, but at the same time, man, I thank you guys for showing up tonight. You know, come back next Thursday again, man, we'll cook up again, but big salutes. Much love and respect. Thank you very much. And until next time, huh, the coach still got to get back to this work, work, and more work three times. Ah. I'm out, y'all. Blessings. <laughs>